first speaker is Gordon Baker, and I've got to learn where he's now from, the Department for Science, Innovation and Technology, because Gordon has been a friend to the drone industry and to ARPAS for at least the past five or six years. He's the longest serving um, person from uh, any of the government departments. And uh, um, he used to be Gordon from Bayes, but now science, innovation and technology. So welcome, Gordon. I'm so sorry not to be there in person because that wouldn't have uh, happened if I had been. So uh, apologies for that. Uh, but uh, let's let's get cracking. I, I've got a few slides, um, and, and I guess please please put them up. I've I've only got five slides to show you today, and I think about fifteen minutes to talk it through. The first and last I'll dwell on for most of the time, and the ones in between are kind of to animate uh, some some of the exciting things that are going on. Um, yeah, so let's just start and, and hold here for a bit. Thanks, Sean. Um, I, I want to do the uh, the introduction that I'm going to make today. It essentially, goes from the generic to the specific quite a bit. So um, that's on purpose. Um, but uh, it, this is not a, a, a presentation I've given before. It's not something I, I give often. So it's been a sort of something I've been chewing over for the past few days as to as to how to make the the, the points and how to drive the agenda that we, I think, all share in an effective uh, and useful way in the government context, but also, um, you know, as we move towards business as usual and, and making the, you know, this, this opportunity turn into reality. Um, so just, uh, you know, starting, starting generic, starting wide, uh, I mean, what, what I've, what, what I've been sort of thinking about is, you know, with, with the formation of a new department that I set, sit in, the Department for Science, Innovation and Technology, um, there's, there's, there's a clear recognition in, in government. There's, you know, there's, a, there's an awful lot of, of new technology-led change about. Um, I remember Justin Trudeau back in 2018, I see it was, talking about the pace of change and how it's, it's you know, it's never been this fast, but it will never be this slow again. Uh, and that's, you know, back before the pandemic, um, being kind of something we all recognize, and I think that I think that 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 continues uh, today. We've got so many different trends, um, it, you know, technology automation um, trends. I'm I'm focusing in. I know there's an awful lot else going on um, that that are shaping and reshaping uh, the agenda and the priorities of government. Um, I saw today something that Eric Schmidt ha has written. Yes, he's he's the uh, the, the Google um, founder, and, and and he talks about innovation power and countries having greater innovation power through their ability to, to not just invent, but to adopt and to adapt uh, the technology that's around. And, and candidly, he's saying that, you know, China has done that an awful lot better than everybody else across all kinds of different automation and technology areas, um, including the ones that, you know, the UK is, is, is definitely trying to set its stall out. Um, as, as being leading in. Uh, we have great research, we have great capability, and the commercialization of that is a famous challenge, not just for us, but for lots of people. But there are environments that do that and support that better. That's uh, really the, the sort of the, the seat I'm in within, within government and, and the responsibility that government feels with this new department. Specifically then on, on, on me and, and my role, I'm in something called technology strategy and security in the new department for science, innovation, and technology. Um, we have, uh, uh, you know, new ministers and portfolios still to be decided, but, you know, a, a real appetite for now at the center of government, knowing what's going on in technology areas and broadcasting that and getting into the challenges that, that are in that, in that area and championing that across government and trying to find the right solutions to it. And actually in the next month or so, both in budget uh, announcements and other ministerial announcements, we're going to have quite a lot of, of new um, an announcements in this area, things um, you know, including on, on, on some of the adjacent technologies in my team, which include quantum engineering, biology, AI, um, um, but, but also, um, you know, in the course of time, there will be more announcements and, and more activity in government. And there's a real appetite for that. Um, one other aspect that I don't know if you guys have all seen, but Patrick Valance has, uh, is, you know, is, is doing a review of how innovation can, how, sorry, how regulation can support innovation better. Um, and um, 
I believe next week is going to be the initial report that he's he's launching as well, which um, which which you know is certainly something that we're keeping a close eye on. Um, another aspect of it is this sort of the, the challenge of dual use technologies. Dr you know, drones are, are definitely in the news and in the public eye in Ukraine. Um, but across the sort of wider robotics automation agenda, there's an awful lot of appetite within the military to, to, to you know, to have better surveillance, better information, better capability, and to work more closely with the commercial sector. And I, um, I, I imagine many of you in the audience are, are, are already, you know, cute to that. But that's certainly going to be an increasing agenda, I think, and and, and rightly so, or, or necessarily so, or appropriately so, as as we look at. Um, you know, at, at shared agendas of, of how you how these capabilities in hazardous environments um, that, that we have that we want to use to keep people safe and to to have better information at work. Um, I don't want to go stay too generic, but just to say, um, um, well, in fact, let, let's 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 move to the to the more specific. Can 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 you go to the the next slide? Uh, thanks. Um, I've been. Um, around the drones agenda since about 2015-16. Uh, we set up something called the Drone Industry Action Group and, and have been um, chewing over some of the challenges and trying to support the growth of the sector for a number of years. Um, last year, this culminated in, in us publishing something called Advancing Airborne Autonomy, and we also um, supported and worked with PwC in their Skies Without Limits uh, refresh and it's that um, those numbers that, that that PwC have forecast as the kind of the upside, the potential, you know, good news case or the uh, the potential upside of, of drones. So it's not guaranteeing that there will be these numbers uh, in the skies, but it's saying, you know, should um, we get very full adoption of all the capabilities, this is where this could go. Um, and you know, the, it could be an underestimate, but there, there's certainly some some, some huge potential for. Um, a, a lot of economic activity, a lot of public benefit from this. And that document, um, uh, I, I, was, I was close to, so I recommend it to you. We published it last July um, and, and talks about the, the appetite within government for, um, for driving that, that change and that, that agenda. Um, that covers uh, you know, an awful, awful lot of the, sort of the wider landscape, but is, is certainly by no means um, you know, complete. And I'll talk a bit more about that. As in a sec, um, are, are the slides still up? I can't see them anymore. Uh, yeah, thanks. And can you just move move to the to the next slide now? It particularly, I wanted to have this visual up there because there is a range of different use cases for drones, and I think um, you guys will know that. I'm preaching to the choir here, probably, but but I think just some of the that that breadth of opportunity is is also part of the complexity and challenge that that we're facing. I know the CAA uh, 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 face as well when, you know, inundated, dare I say it, with different opportunities, different business cases, different capabilities and technologies. Um, and, you know, all have their merits and how we kind of develop the, 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 the new business models as they go forward, I think, is, is, is both a challenge and an opportunity. I'm not picking any favorites particularly, but uh, I, I'm particularly active right now with, with medical drone delivery and, and trying to see where that can go. Um, but also very conscious that, you know, in oil and gas, in rail, with network rail and their activities, there's an awful lot of places where, you know, drones have become a, a business as usual capability in a, in a, in a lot of spheres. Um, and that's something we should be proud of because five or six years ago, you know, that, that certainly wasn't the case. And, and in looking always to the future, let's not forget that there's an awful lot of good stuff happening that we we can build on um next slide please sean um uh, this slide is you know it can make a, it's a similar point there that, that, that it's this wonderful complexity of the environment that that, that drones need to operate in and well, let's see rightly so just necessarily so this 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 is the complexity that that, that we that we live in um today um and you know in a moment, I'm going to get back to the sort of the generic meets the specific points I, I make. But I guess, you know, on, on this visual, the, the point here is that, that there's an awful lot of stakeholders, an awful lot of people that, that have to be engaged. And that kind of as we move to business as usual in, in this sector, you know, all of these different components being part of it, you know, it has to be that business as usual. Not everybody has to do everything, of course, because that's impossible. But, you know, as we look to the manufacturing capability, that bit in the bottom right, or the you know, critical national infrastructure, the capabilities and the, and the end user and the client and fitting in with their business models, you know, all of these things have, have this sort of woven Venn diagram of, of opportunities and challenges that we face. Um, and then can you move to the next slide, please, Sean? 
Thanks. So now it's just kind of trying to get into some of the, the, the specifics of, of, of what's going on, what to look out for, how to get involved and how we kind of, I hope, can work, you know, best, better um, going forward. Um, there's There's been quite a lot of publications recently, um, uh, but just before I start on that, I mean, one thing I was thinking about this morning was, I don't know, if you'll allow me a, a 30 second digression, but um, you know, looking back and it's easy to, you know, if, if you can just find a parallel with something else, you know, does it help cl clarify where we're going in our minds? But I just want to throw out the, the potential parallels with, you know, the early days of, of, of the roads and, and the vehicles. Um, um, my, my, my grandpa used to tell me he was born in 1905. He was a mechanical engineer. He built and raced motorbikes um, at Oxford Uni in the 1920s. He bought a car with you know, no license uh, and was the first guy to be driving in Kent where he lived. Um, and you know, driving tests only came in initially voluntarily in 1935. The MOT only came in in 1960. And that was only after 10 years of ownership of a car. Did you need it? You know, there, there was a lot of, uh, of, of, of freewheeling um, that, that went on in those early days. Um, and, and, and the drone world is just not in that same free uh, space um, as the RHC, the Regulatory Horizons Council, the blue document on, on your screen. Um, they put it that, you know, drones are born in captivity. Um, you know, there is a, a, a real complexity that they're trying to operate within. And that's just not conducive to, to, to fast innovation um, without an awful lot of, of extra work. And, and I guess that's what the sort of contextually what, what we're talking about. The other sort of framing concept I had in my mind uh, as I was thinking this through was, was the storming, forming, norming, performing um, kind of framework that I see is from the 1960s, actually. It's been around an awful long time. But, you know, we, we need to, to move from, you know, a lot of what's been storming, over, I, I think still in many areas is storming, into, in, into, into, you know, really clearly forming now. I think that's what, that's what we're trying to do. And then norming and business as usual and growth and end users having the confidence to be able to buy drone services without anxiety, without you know, the public perception, regulatory concerns uh, they might have. And that's our challenge, I think, you know, for is it three years or, or five years. But specifically then on, on what's going on, um, last summer, DFT's Flight Path to the Future, that, that yellow document there in the middle, um, was published. It's, it's, it's a relatively high level, sort of 10-point plan across, uh, you know, future flight um, areas. Um, but it does, uh, it did mention the Future Flight Industry Group, which is a ministerial-led industry group, which will meet next week, I understand, for the first time, to, to try to kind of give that, that minister into the sector oversight and, and, and structure to take some decisions and, and clarify things as we move forward. Um, you know, in the, in the norming, uh, forming and norming space, you know, do we have the right institutions? Do we have the right capabilities? Is everything, you know, that we need, you know, structurally there? That's going to be a, a really important conduit for that. I, I personally think, you know, it, the landscape will continue to evolve, um, uh, you know, hopefully um, productively and, and certainly with input from, from a lot of you. Um, future, future flight, the £125 million pounds of government fund, funding that's gone in that, I think we take that for granted to some extent at the moment. That money will run out. That is a big, um, a big slug from government in current and recent contexts and, and shouldn't, be, um, shouldn't be sort of treated lightly. It's a great capability and we've got 17 projects underway that were announced again last summer that will be working hard to do a lot this summer. I know that's something that, uh, you know, there's some funding going into CAA to support that, but that's a, a, you know, a real challenge to make sure that we make the most of those capabilities while we have those collaborations with government funding and, and, and the opportunity in the next sort of year or two to, to really drive those. Um, I think there's probably, and I don't want to, you know, skew the, the, the land for the CAA who are following me, um, but there's an awful lot around the regulatory space. Um, we've had recently the FAIWG, the, the Future Aerospace Integration Working Group uh, publication, Let's Get Flying, really interesting recommendations and thorough and, 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 and a lot of work went into that. This Monday also, South of the Clouds, um, it was published. I recommend that to you. Quite a, a tightly worded document by something called the BV Loss Operations Forum. It's got the Nats logo on that because Nats have been the, the, the sort of the chair and coordinator convener for that group. Uh, you know, supporting the FAIWG's recommendations and really pushing, I guess, for for a SIG, a, a special interest group or a working group, to kind of help 
um, you know, e e e institutionalize, e you know, structure these um, uh, these these necessary kind of changes or, or, or the interactions between the regulator and the sector on what new technology is coming through and the and the challenges ahead. Um, I, I hope we'll hear more about the four pillars plans from the CAA uh, and just how they can they can sort of bring all this uh, to, to business as usual. Um, I just want to very quickly in the last couple of minutes, uh, I think I've got two minutes, um, uh, just speak about uh, some of the wider stuff. I've got a little update from my colleagues in the home office on counter drone, um, or as uh, you'll, I think, I know Graham will be pleased, you'll be pleased to hear um, that they're, they're changing it from counter counter unmanned aircraft strategy, the counter drone strategy back in 2019 to a drone security strategy. So, um, you know, being sort of less, less uh, obviously anti uh, uh, drones, uh, there's basically, that's a commitment to do, to publish that this year. There's going to be a, a, a JSARC, that's the joint security uh, group in home office. They're going to be launching a survey very soon um, to get input into that strategy. And so there's definitely going to be some interplay and, and we'll sort of certainly play it out through you, Graham, and, and, and other colleagues to, to, to inform you when that comes. Um, I want to touch on medical, as I mentioned before, um, uh, with future flight. Uh, there's been an awful lot of appetite that's been sort of, I guess, gently supported. But we know a lot of NHS trusts and a lot of, um, you know, drone service providers are looking at how, whether emergency or, or re you know, regular um, uh, drone delivery services can support the medical um, need, um, whether it's supply chain resilience or emergency response, um, or, or you know just pharmacies and value for money in their logistics. Um, and that, there's some workshops underway at the moment that we're doing with Future Flight, um, run by Ajuno, the consultancy that a number of you um, I, I think will, will be part of, and hoping to kind of deliver toolkits and, and information for that. And we've got the department, uh, the DHSC, Department of Health, Health and Social Care, um, you know, really actively uh, involved in that and looking at what that opportunity um, is. So I'm excited about about that it feels like medical um, could be the, the, the you know a really important possible business case you know to back and support at this stage whether as a sort of frontier tech capability to then move on to the wider uh, medical as so a wider drone delivery uh, opportunities um, uh, and and also actually because it's it's obviously a, a good thing um, you know, we know the public like it. We know uh, industry want it, and and you know, as a sort of first first among equals, um, among many equal uh, good you know business cases, that feels like an important one. Um, just lastly, to focus on um, the challenges. Um, okay, say, sorry, I think I disappeared there. Um, I'll just focus on so um, focus on some some challenges ahead. Um, I think there is quite a lot around the the public perception, industry perception, uptake area um, is still, I, I can't think of any anyone of my my friends, colleagues, family who's, who's ever seen a drone being used in, you know, in a, in, in a commercial context. I've seen the police, police using them once, uh, wearing their big flak jackets loud and proud. I think as people um, see and engage with the benefits of drones, there's going to be an awful lot of, of, of to and fro to build that confidence. Um, PwC will have a uh, some more sort of survey results from some updates to their public perception in industry perception surveys they've done in the past quite soon. I've seen some of the emerging study results from that. There's definitely a rising tide of enthusiasm and support for drones, but there's still you know some so, some work to do and 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 and, and learnings from um, how to do that 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 we need to share. Um, I don't know quite what I cut out on, but um, importance of medical um, and counter drone, and also you know the, the the skills training qualifications piece, and those becoming more sectorally relevant and resonating there, I think are important too. Um, and just as as a sort of a, a final thought, just to really you know um, hope that. Uh, I, People feel like they can come to me, whether it's via Graham to me, um, to, to to let me know what's a priority for you to get involved. There's a drone industry action group, which is pretty open access that I that I convene. Um, you know, want to hear what's what's working well for you, what's got having an impact, and what the challenges you face. So, uh, Gordon Baker at bays.gov.uk. It's still Bays, my email address for the time being. I'm sure we'll get a DSIT one soon, um, but otherwise through Graham and, and the team at RPAS. Um, you can get a hold of me. Thanks all. I'm really looking forward to the next spe uh, speakers and um, all the best. Thank you, Gordon. Let's show some appreciation for Gordon. Today.